Hi everybody, it's Trainer Jules from the Alaska Sea Life Center. We're really excited that you get to tune in with us today. It's a very interesting time of year for our seals. It's breeding season, it's mold season, there's a lot going on, and we're gonna get to give you a little peek of what we see here. Hi guys, my name is Maddie, and I'm a research technician here at the Alaska Sea Life Center on the FOCUS project. FOCUS stands for Physiology and Health of Cooperating Arctic Seals. As part of my day-to-day -day work activities, I work alongside the team of mammologists here at the center, as well as six Arctic seals, to better understand their, the basic biology and physiology of their species. Before these animals were research animals on the FOCUS project, they started their time here at the center at, through the Wildlife Response Program, where they were stranded and then deemed non-releasable. And since then, they have joined us as research partners in our research goals. Today, you'll be joining us for a molt monitoring session where I'll be assessing the animal's coat as they go through their molt. The molt is an annual process where they shed several layers of epidermis and old fur and then regrow a completely new coat. To track this process, we document the characteristics, timing, and progression of their molt through photographs, observations, and monitoring haul-out behavior. Good. This is Sura. She's a one of four spotted seals we have here at the Sea Life Center. She was stranded as a pup from Clark, Alaska. Good. In her first year of life. She's about 150 pounds and she's a subarctic species. So seals like Sura use ice in the springtime to give birth and raise their pups. Good. Good girl, good. Now we'll have our researcher Maddie come over and kind of show you what we're seeing with her molt progression. All right, so to better understand Sarah's molt, we document the progression, the characteristics, and the timing of her molt. Um, one of the ways we'll do that is by taking standardized photographs of her body in set areas so that over time we can see changes as she grows in that new fur and sheds her old, old coat. Another thing that I'll do daily is just get eyes on her and take a look at how her coat is doing and notice any significant changes. So I'm looking at um, all of her coat to see if she has any loose fur. Um, sometimes I can do taction on her. Um, because we can work together on this kind of behavior and see that I do have loose fur coming up from her coat. So I know that she's still actively shedding. Um, and from observations, I know that all of her back and sides right now are old coat. You might be able to see a little bit of silvery, bright new fur coming in on her muzzle there. Um, and so that's the first new fur she actually started growing in this year. And then if you want, we can take a look at her belly, and that's where we'll actually see most of the new coat she has right now. So we, here we are looking, you can see all of this silvery, bright, like really vibrant fur is new fur. We have those dark spots. We can look under her flippers to see where she has some new fur growing in as well. And so I have pictures of all of this um, from the very start of her molt. And so I can notice these changes as they're happening. Um, and every day we'll score the coat to determine what percentage of her body is new fur. So right now she's at about 20% new fur. So she's still towards the beginning of her molt and she has a ways to go. Another very interesting thing that happens with seals during their molt is they actually lose all of their whiskers. Oh. Good girl. So you can see that her whiskers are all different sizes. Um, me looking at her every day, I can see that she's also missing some. And that's because she's dropping them. Now when they lose their whiskers, um, they regrow them every year, but they don't lose them all at the same time. The reason for that is they're very important sensories for them to be able to find their food in the water since the water is not always clear or very visible for them to catch their prey. So they really rely on these whiskers um, to make sure that they have a, a sustainable diet. Good. Whiskers are pretty interesting. They're made of keratin, just like your fingernails, and they take about 100 days to completely grow back. Good girl. Good boy. 
This is Pimnik. He is a ring seal. He's called a ring seal, and his species, if you look on his coat, he's got rings there. He was stranded in Stebbins, Alaska. And when he was stranded, he was already one years old. So his name Pimnik in Inuit actually means yearling. He is the smallest species of seal, and he is the same age as Sura, so he's six years old. But you can see that there's a big size difference. He's about 75 pounds, so he's half the size of Sura that you just saw. Good. What's really cool about Pimnik is he's an Arctic ice dependent seal. And what that means is that he depends on the ice to survive. He has these really cool flippers and nails. So not only does he use these to haul out onto ice, but he digs breathing holes in the ice so he can breathe since he lives in an environment that's covered completely in the ice. Not only does he use these to, to dig out breathing holes, but this species of seal also create these really cool ice caves. And so since they hide away from their main predators, the polar bears, they hide under the ice and the snow in these ice caves. Not only do they give them protection from their predators, but it also, during pupping season, it, ex it protects their pups from extreme cold and gives them a nice little burrow. Good. This is one really cool adaptation with the ring seal species. And it's really important with the ice that they need it to have reproductive cess and for their pups to survive. Good. All right, we're gonna have Maddie come over and kind of tell you what's going on with his molt progression. All right, guys, so we're back here with Pimnik looking at his molt. Uh, one really interesting fact is that ring seals tend to molt much quicker than spotted seals, which is one thing we're interested in tracking through this program and how there are differences between species. So Pimnik actually started molting this year one day before Sura, but you, if you can tell, he actually has much more of his new coat already. He's at about 90% of his new coat. All right, so taking a look at Pimnik's coat, I can see that he's much further along in his molt than Sura. He's got almost 90% of his old, old coat shedded and replaced by his new fur. If we look at his belly, we can see some of the old fur patches that are still remaining. So under his front flippers here, he has some brown portions of fur and that's just his old coat that's waiting to be shed and that'll be replaced soon. And the rest of it that I'm seeing is mostly his new silvery and black fur with those characteristic ring seal rings. One aspect of this project is studying the difference between the different Arctic species. And so one important fun fact is that Pimnik actually started molting just one day before Sura this year, but he's already progressed much further. Ring seals actually tend to molt much quicker with an average of 29 days from start to finish whereas spotted seals have an average of 36 days, so they do take a little bit longer. We mark the start of a molt date from the first day we see loose fur, so if you're able to see, he actually has fur still coming off of his back right now, um, and that's what we saw with Sura too, just from feeling around, you can see fur coming off. And that's great, because that's making room for his new coat to come in so that he can wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Alaska Sea Life Center. If you want to keep in tune with what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we had a great time with you today, and we hope to come back and show you Sarah's progression when she's 100% molted. Good boy, buddy. Good boy.